Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me yet again this week. So today we're going to be taking a little bit of a different shift, and rather than painting, which we did last week, we are going to be re-sculpting. Specifically, a running braid on a model horse, toy horse, briar horse, whatever it is you'll be using. So we will be utilizing a variety of tools, such as a heat gun, exacto knife, epoxy sculpt, sculpting tools, and water. As a little pre-word of caution, these are very sharp and hot tools, so make sure you either have a supervision of a parent or you are practicing the utmost safety precautions. So we are going to begin by just applying the heat gun onto the mane of the horse. What this does is it melts down the plastic and allows you to kind of cut away at it, as you can see here. So when you are using a heat gun, it is very important that you are not holding it in one spot for a large amount of time. That can result in excessive heat bubbles of not only the mane, but the body itself, which you will see happen on this horse at one point. I'll point to it. There it is. And for me, that's really not a big issue because I prep anyway. I can just sand that down. But if you are new to sculpting and you don't really want to deal with that challenge, I highly suggest either you have a low setting of heat gun or you use a model that doesn't have mane on its neck. So here again, I'm just repeating the steps of cutting away, warming the plastic, and here I am using my Dremel or my sander to kind of sand away at the forelock. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying to avoid excessive heat bubbling on the face and on the eyes. Just by using um, the Dremel, it's a lot easier than applying the heat and then cutting away. It also makes sure I don't cut away at the ears, which is not a project I wanted to do for this horse. So this is a tool that I use often, but I do not use it to completely sand away the manes because I have a hard time having enough power and having enough sand paper for my Dremel to be able to kind of tackle a project like that. So I did want to just quickly talk about the whole cutting and removing of the main part, but I know a lot of you guys are here to see the sculpting of the running braid itself, which is why we're jumping right into it. So this is day two of working with this horse. As you can see, I had to re-add in those muscles and the cheek and the head that I kind of lost and sanded down. This is something that's very important. If you don't do that, your horse is just going to look sloppy. It's going to miss that muscling and that tone, and it's just not going to look as realistic as you probably would like it to. So definitely, if you go about working on a horse that has mane on the body, go back and add that muscle. So here I'm just sketching a basic outline for where the braid is going to go. Not necessarily as a base for me to understand where it's going to go, but to give me an idea of how much epoxy I'm going to be using. So on that note, here is the epoxy sculpt that I use. It's a two-part. I also use a paintbrush, a bowl of water, and a variety of different sculpting tools, whatever really suits your needs. So this is the natural two-part epoxy that I'm just mixing. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so it's 50-50. And now I'm going to just take little clumps of it and roll out what we like to call snakes, noodles, whatever. Um, I will be rolling a bunch of these out, and these will be kind of the base of my mane. So again, I'm really just pushing down and trying to start kind of where that shape of the braid is going to go. And just as a little um, tip that I see a lot of people struggle with, frequently people will start the mane too far onto the left side, considering most horse breeds have the mane on the right side. Um, you want to have it directly growing out of the crest, which is just the tip of the mane where you would rub your hand along the top of the mane. So you will see I will go and kind of estimate a line of where I want that mane to grow out of. It just adds a little bit of realism. If you look at references of real horses, they frequently have that mane growing right out of the crest. So there I kind of went a little early and I trimmed my nice sloping line. So I will do this once all is said and done in terms of um, adding the detail and kind of um, watering and smoothing it down. But because I needed more epoxy, I didn't have any left, I figured I would just cut away at some and use that to finish the mane. So here you can see I'm going to kind of give a rough estimate of where the mane grows out of. For you guys, it will be on the left side of that paintbrush. Um, so definitely when you are creating manes, I just take an X-Acto knife and I cut a straight line all the way down from the top of the pole all the way to the withers. This just creates that nice clean finish and it really helps show exactly where the mane is going to grow out of. 
So now you can see we have kind of our base for the main, and it's time to start going into details. So I'm going to begin by applying a nice water wash with my paintbrush all over my epoxy. This just smooths out the epoxy and it softens it and allows it to hold more detail that you will be using your rubber silicone tool for. So um, this just gives it a nice smooth finish. And I'll proceed this multiple times after I add the detail and just as a finishing touch to really smooth out the rough edges which you will see. So here's my silicone rubber cone tool which I absolutely love. And I'm just going to use this to begin to just rough out the details of the mane. So it is a nice easy mane. It's smooth. It's soft. I've seen manes with severe texture that is very challenging to do. And I praise those who are capable of doing it. But for the sake of just doing a simple running braid, we are just having a nice straight haired horse. So that makes it a lot easier to add the details when you just kind of have to go in with your little rubber tool. People have used kind of hardened paintbrushes because that also gives the hair texture. And you just go in and you add that detail. So now you can see I'm going in with my paintbrush and some water. And I'm smoothing out that epoxy. It's probably one of my favorite parts. It just cleans the entire horse. It makes it look soft and realistic and textured and you don't have all those clumps of epoxy that do just naturally build up. So one thing I do want people to note is after you've smoothed out your, your, you know, your mane, I want you to go back and see if there's enough texture for you. I end up, like you can see here, going back with my little cone tool multiple, multiple, multiple times to add layers of mane and to really get that detail. You don't want it to be so cut and dry that it doesn't look realistic, but you also want it to be fairly straight haired. So here I'm just kind of blending the growth of the mane into the crest like I was talking about and again cutting away because as I did that it overstretched past where the natural growth of the mane is. So I'm just going to take another tool, you can take your X-Acto knife if you need to, and I'm just cutting away again creating that nice straight line and I'll do this probably three or four times and the reason is because I really want to soften that edge and make sure that I don't have too thick of a mane right at the tip of the growth. So I'm proceeding all the way down. And you can see it's a lot better now. It's not as high up. And it's also very important that you blend the mane into the crest because this is one area that you really can't sand down. So if you have kind of a gap, I would definitely suggest going and getting rid of that, removing it, because you can't sand that. If you go to sand, you're going to lose all your hair detail, and it's just going to blend in with the muscles of the neck. making sure that there are no high points in the mane. Sometimes it gets a little bumpy and, and rocky, so I wanted to make it nice and even and, and clean. And here is really where I go in and I cut my slope. So I'm giving about a medium pressure. I'm not pushing so hard that it's cutting into the horse, but I wanted to cut through the, the epoxy itself, which is kind of a thicker layer. Not too thick, but... So here you can see a nice clean line and as you get closer to kind of the pole of the horse or the top of the horse by the ears, you do want to get thinner. Similar if you look up pictures of horses with uh, running braids, it starts off really tight up to the crest and then by the end it kind of falls out and gets a little bit more loose. Cleaning up, making sure I don't have any epoxy on the neck. There's a little bit, but that's enough to sand down. And here's kind of my optional choice. I like to just cut a nice clean line at the end of the braid. And I will also add some tufts of kind of flyaways by the withers where hair typically does get a little bit thinner. Just because of saddle and tack placement, um, hair doesn't grow as thick right by the withers. So I am going to add that as well as tufts of hair on the outside of the braid, which you will see here. So again, I'm rolling out my snakes and I'm applying them just at the end of the braid. And I'm using the same procedure, you know, I'm keeping a nice straight haired texture with my cone tool, watering it down, and smoothing it and blending it with the rest of the mane. So here I'm just cutting a little bit of it away because I realize that it's a little too thick of a tuft. So I really want to thin it out. I absolutely love adding that. I think it's just the cutest thing. 
So here I'm going to begin to add the pieces of hair that fall out of the braid. So once the braid is done, the pieces of hair that are not tied in. And I will also add my elastic when I put the braid on. So it's very important that you do stay consistent with your manes, your forelocks, your tails. If your horse has a very thin mane, they probably will have a very thin forelock as well. Or vice versa, thick mane, thick forelock. So just make sure you're consistent. And the same with texture. If they have a straight mane, they probably have a straight forelock and a straight tail. Sometimes it, that varies, but for the most part, the horse's hair growth is pretty consistent throughout. So this is a multi-day process. I really start with um, cutting the mane away and adding that detail in. That's day one. And then after kind of the muscles have cured, I will then go and add the first layer of the mane, which is those hairs that we just did. And then I'll let that dry and I'll go in and add the little braid itself. But for now, we're just going to work on getting that mane and the forelock as well as the bridle path onto the horse. So here I'm going to apply the bridle path by rolling a little snake. So when you are doing a bridle path, typically it's clipped right down to the horse's body, right down to the pole. So it's kind of important that you don't let it get too thick. I like to have it risen just a little bit. It adds a little bit of detail. It shows that it's there. But again, you don't have to put this if you don't want to. I just like to have a little bit of texture to paint on so I can really differentiate the horse's head from the forelock and bridle path. So I'm just getting that detail in and smoothing out. And you're going to do the same thing when you do the forelock as you would with the mane. So again, applying those snakes onto the horse's head. And again, she does have a thick mane, so I'm going to apply kind of a thick forelock. And you can give it whatever direction you would like. If you want it to be kind of off and touching the ear, that's totally good. I personally wanted more of an almost doing that type of step where it's kind of curving off of her head. And you'll see it in the front, which you can kind of see there, that it's almost blowing to the right side. I absolutely love sculpting forelocks. It's so fun. It gives them personality. So here I'm just smoothing it out. And making sure it blends nice with the bridle path. And I'm just getting that direction, using my brush to kind of get it to angle itself more to the right. As I smooth it off. So at this point, I'm going to let all of this dry for 12 to 24 hours. I come back to, to the next day, and we're going to begin with the braid itself. So we are going to start by rolling up a bunch of little bits of epoxy. And I like to start braids from one side to the next. So what you will essentially be doing is creating an arrow with two pieces of epoxy. So I'm going to start by applying the epoxy angled towards the ears and the head all the way down the mane on one side. And I'm really pushing them together, making sure that they don't fall off. But you don't want to push them so hard that you're losing the texture of them because you want it to look like they are braids and intertwined hair. So here you can see I'm going all the way down, making sure I'm not pushing too hard, but making sure they stay on. So next I'm going to start the second layer. Again, this is, they're supposed to look like arrows. You can see how it is kind of angled now away from the head. And I'm going to repeat this step all the way down. I kind of skipped forward because you, you don't want to see me do all of them. Um, so now I'm just going to smooth them out with the water and begin texturing them. So I'm using my silicone rubber tool again. And I'm just kind of adding some hair texture in some direction. Being very light. Or making sure that I'm not applying too much pressure that's going to cause them to be irregularly shaped. I want them to be all nice and smooth and textured. So now I'm just taking a very thin and fine little brush
making sure I don't push too hard, keeping it clean, keeping my shapes and my form. I don't want anything to get lost in translation. This was actually the second attempt of sculpting this. Sometimes it takes a while and it's a learning experience. So this is the finished product after it is cured and it has been primed. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me yet again. And I will see you next week with another fun and exciting project. Cheers.